Welcome to the tutorial for the Fittleworth blouse. I'm going to start by stay stitching my neckline, so just running a machine stitch around the back neck here and the front neck the V-shape along here. I'm using a cotton lawn today so it's pretty stable and probably it would not stretch too badly if I didn't do this but certainly if you're using a viscose or um, a georgette or a chiffon or something like that you definitely want to do this before you start. There we are, you can see that stitch, just an ordinary stitch just all around within the seam allowance just to stop it stretching while I'm constructing. So next we're going to do the darts. I've transferred the point of my dart through my paper pattern with a pin. So I'm just marking that on the wrong side of the fabric and you can see I've got a little snip there for the other end of the dart which I'm going to join together, right sides together. And move that pin to hold the fabric. So wedge shape starting from your side seam. Continue sewing, little back tack there towards your pin, tapering off and coming off to nothing, just where your pin was. So this is the shape your dart should be. Open it up, you can see there's a nice bust shape in there now. Turn it over, we want to press this dart downwards towards the hem, give it a steam and a press. There we go, can't see it on the right side can you? So next we're going to do the shoulders and side seams. There's my back. You can see, or maybe you can't, let me show you. I've already overlocked the shoulders and the sides in readiness. And I have done the same with the fronts. I've done that shoulder, I've overlocked it. You can zigzag it or however you want to finish it off is great. And the side seam. So let's pin one of these first. Start with the shoulder, match your edges, centimetre seam allowance as always on my patterns unless otherwise stated. Starting under the arm, working your way down to the hem. Make sure that dart's pinned in nicely. And we're going to stitch starting with the underarm here, look. Making sure the dart is pointing the right way, it's not got ruckled. Back tack at the end of the seam. Always across your shoulder, nice back tack. There we go, let's take these pins out and I'm going to open these up now and give them a press. I've just pre-overlocked because I just find it easier to overlock it before rather than afterwards. Same for the side seam. There we go, pressed open. Okay, so we're going to pop the gathers in for the sleeve, the gathering threads. This is my pattern. You'll see there's notches and balance marks at the top. Make sure you've put them in and at the bottom because that's where your gather's going to go. So I'm going to take one of my sleeves and, yeah, that's right, that's one notch there. At the bottom, I've got one there and one there. That's where I need to pop my gathering stitches. So I'm basically doing a row of larger stitching one centimeter from the edge in between those notches so I'm starting at one and I'm continuing until the other one and then I'm put a second row of stitching halfway between the raw edge and the first stitch line so it's about five millimeters in there you go you've got two rows and it starts at the one notch there and where is it there it is finishes there that's where my gathering needs to be. You can see again I've pre-overlocked this underarm seam. So I'm going to pop a pin in there and stitch a centimetre all the way down. Back tack. There we go, that's the seam. And then we just need to open that up and give it a press. Okay, one sleeve. 
So cuffs next. This is my cuff pattern. You'll see that there are little lines with different sizes on. You need to snip in at your size. These will match the notches that we've just used for our gathering on our sleeve. So do put them on, even if it's just on one of the long sides. So two cuffs, let's separate those out. Right sides together, short ends. We're going to stitch a centimetre. Here we go. There we are. We'll open that seam up and give it a press. Nicely pressed. Then we fold the long edges together. So we're folding it in half. So we've got a nice fold at the bottom to form a nice edge of our cuff. And the two raw edges are together. Make sure your seams are together and give that a press. There we are, nicely pressed, ready prepped, ready to go on our sleeve. Okay, let's get these cuffs onto the sleeve. So there we go, one sleeve, one cuff. The cuffs are just the same. You don't have to worry about getting the right one. We're going to find the seam, there we go, and then that we're going to match to the seam on the sleeve. So put the sleeve inside the cuff and match the seam to the seam. So it's all tucked under your arm nicely. When you're finished, pop a pin in there. And then you're going to find your gathering threads. There we go, and pull them up. Always pull up the bobbin thread as it's much easier to pull. You'll get a nicer gather. So I'm going to pull these up until that sleeve fits nice and snug inside the cuff. There we go. And this is where your notches should match now. So you should have your, there we go, nice and snug inside. There should be a notch on your cuff that matches that notch just at the start of the gathering. So let's have a little look, see if we can find that. There's a little snip there and there should be one on your sleeve. There it is. So put those together. Then you know your gathers are in exactly the right place. There's one there and there's one there. Pop those together. There we go. And then we know that that's gathered perfect amount. Pop some more pins in if you want to and sort out your gathers so they're all nice and even before we put it under the machine. So I'm going to start from the underarm seam and I'm stitching inside my sleeve. And I'm stitching a centimetre from the edge. So when I get to the gathers, I'll be stitching over that first line of gathering stitches that I put in. So again, just sort of titivate the gathers so that they lay nicely as you go over them. It makes a huge difference. You end up then with nice gathers rather than pleats. And just continue round until you get back to the underarm seam again. There we are. Let's take these pins out. There's one cuff neatly stitched onto one sleeve. Let's have a look. Check we haven't got any tucks or gubs that show on the right side. No, that looks okay. So we're gonna just finish this edge off, overlock, zigzag, whichever is your chosen preference. Let's have a look at it now, it's finished. There we go, I might give that a steam. So now we're gonna start looking at the frill. Now, there are many ways to hem this frill. I've chosen what I think is the easiest one, but this is beautiful. This is a, a pin hem and you would do it with a rolling foot. This is what it would look like for your machine. And you can see there's a little curl there where the fabric goes through. And as it curls it through and stitches, it turns it over and over and you get that tiny, very beautiful little hem. However, there is an art to using the rolling foot. Try it out, experiment if you have one. 
Um, you may like it, you may not. This one is an overlock and turn. Very simple, straightforward, easy job. This one is a little bit like the rolled hem. It's a little bit wider because you actually just turn your fabric over once like that and stitch it, maybe trim it afterwards, and then you fold it over again and stitch it again. So you end up with a tiny, what we call pin hem, um, but it is slightly wider than the rolled hem, but still beautiful, I think. So pick whichever one you want, or you could do a rolled hem on your overlocker if you have one. I'm gonna do this one today because I find that the easiest and quickest. So having decided what edging I'm going to do, I have pre-overlocked my centre back seam there and all the outside edge. I'm going to put these edges together here and stitch a centimetre. This is a centre back seam, so it will go on the centre back of your neckline. There we go. I'm going to press that open. Nicely pressed. And now I'm going to turn it over and turn my overlocking over just so that you can't see it on the other side. So I've sort of turned it over the overlocking plus like a millimetre or something. And you can see I've pressed it to go around the curves because it will be much easier. I'm going to start at this point here and work my way all the way around the long edge, the long curly edge to the other centre front. Here we go. I'm choosing to stitch mine from the wrong side. You can stitch it from the right side if you like. It's your blouse, your choice. And I'm basically just folding that overlocking over, making sure it doesn't show on the right side, and then just popping a stitch line evenly all around the outside edge. There we go, that's it stitched. Let's have a little look at that edge close up. There you go. Blends in quite nicely with the pattern. I'm going to give that a nice press, make it nice and crisp. There we are, one frill done. Okay, so let's put this frill onto the neckline. There's my blouse looking a bit like a jacket at the moment because that centre front seam is still closed, uh, still open, sorry. Now I need to find the centre back of my back neckline. So shoulders together, there's my back point there. I've already popped a little snip there. And then I want the wrong side of my frill to the right side of my blouse, finding that centre back seam, matching it to that little snip that I've put in at the centre back neck. That's my starting point. Okay, then unravelling my frilly bits. Now you've got notches on the inside of this frill. The first one should match your shoulder seam. So there it is. Find the shoulder seam, match those two points, pop a pin in. Then there should be another notch on your frill and there should be one on your neckline. There we go. Pin those together. And then find these angles down here. Got sort of corner there. That's going to be the front of your V-neck. And that's the frill. So just pop those angles together like that. Pop a pin in. There we go. And those raw edges need to go together. There we go. So you do the same for the other side. We've got the notch on the frill, the first one that matches the shoulder seam. Pop a pin in. Then we've got the notch on the blouse and the notch on the frill that go together. And then we've got the two angles at the front, the two cornery pieces, pop those together. Fabulous. So put as many pins in as you need. Um, and then we're going to stitch them together. I'm going to stitch this within my one centimetre seam allowance. So I don't know, eight mil or something. Basically just because I don't want to have to unpick anything. Um, 
So if it's just inside the one centimetre seam allowance, then when you put your facing on, you shouldn't get any stitching throughout showing through so you don't have to unpick any little bits and bobs. So just take your time going around, don't get any tucks or any gubs in it. And stitch around until you get down to that centre front bit. There we go. Let's have a look. There we go, that's looking nice. Got our cornery bits, our frills, take all your pins out, obviously. It's looking good. So now we're gonna pop these sleeves in while it's still open at the front. Um, we're gonna put the sleeves in. So here we go. You should have a pair of these, obviously. So you've got a double notch for the back, single notch for the front. So that one, double notch there, so that's a left sleeve. So I'm going to start by joining these underarm seams. I like to work from inside my sleeve, so match seam to seam. Pop a pin in. And again, match your notches. Incidentally, if you're not confident at putting sleeves in, this bit that I'm pinning now is called the sleeve head. You can always run um, a gathering stitch around the top, a centimetre in around that top curve, and just pull it up ever so slightly, just a tiny, tiny bit, not so it's gathered, but just to help you ease in the sleeve head if you find that a bit of a struggle. So now I'm just matching all the notches up. First of all, and putting pins in, and then I'll go back and sort of fill in the gaps with pins so that I know the ease for the sleeve is in the right places and you've got the balance right. It will hang how it should. Okay, a couple more pins. And then we're going to stitch in. So you can see it fits nicely. I'm going to stitch from the inside of my sleeve. I like to do that because I like to see what I'm doing. And personally, I find it easier to distribute that ease as I go. But um, whatever you find easiest, that's great. Centimetre seam allowance as ever. Gently easing that any excess in. Careful to make sure you're not puckering or getting any tucks in there. Okay, let's give it a check over. That looks okay that side. That side looks all right. Yep, that's okay. Great. No puckers or pleats, so I'm going to overlock this raw edge to finish it off nice and neatly. Great. Let's have a look from the right side. Oh yes, that looks good. I might give that a little steam. So now we're gonna just get this facing prepped. I have block cut these. These are your notches, just while I've got the pattern in my hand. Um, which means I ironed the interfacing onto the fabric before I cut them out so that I know they're not stretched and that they're pretty accurate. You can see the interfacing on that side. So I'm going to find the short edges and a centimetre seam allowance. There we go. Press that seam open. Great job. Now we're going to overlock or zigzag, finish the edge basically of the outside of the facing. There we go, I've overlocked mine. That's one facing prepped, ready to go. Okay, let's put this facing onto our neckline. So we've got our facing there and we've got our blouse with two sleeves in and a frill. I'm going to find centre back again and 
match that centre back seam to the centre back. There it goes. Pop a pin in there. That's our anchor point. Then we're going to do the same, working along our facing. There should be a notch that matches the shoulder seam. Pop a pin in, and there should be another notch that matches. There we go. That matches the notch on the neckline. Can I find it now they're stitched together? Yep, yeah, there it is. So pop those together, and then you want to match those angles at the centre front. There we go. But you're just going to pin to the corner. So, pins in between. Pin the other side. As many pins as you want. You can always tack it first if you feel happier doing that. There we go. Last pin. So, I'm going to stitch. I'm going to leave that bit free. So, I want to start from there and stitch my centimetre seam allowance all the way inside my neckline to there, leaving that bit free as well. So, here we go. Place it under the machine, centimetre away, back tack to start. Try and make sure everything's lying nice and flat as you go. So there's a sneaky little tuck in there. Let's get rid of that before I stitch over it. Okay, let's take these pins out and have a look. Okay. So, one facing. I can't see any obvious tucks or gubs, so I'm going to snip into all the layers of the seam allowance now. Put your snips closer together, the tighter the curve, and then I'm going to trim this facing, just the facing down by half, all the way around. just to reduce the bulk a little bit. So you don't want it to be too hard around your neck. Clip away the little seam bits. Put some more snips in. And trim that to half. So basically once you've done that to all around your neckline, you're going to push your seam allowances towards your facing and then on the right side of your facing you're going to stitch really close to that seam. This is going to hold down all that seam allowance towards the facing so that your neckline will roll really beautifully. You won't get any awkward bits popping out. You want your facing to lie neatly inside. Okay, let's have a look. That looks okay, nice near the edge, and that will sit much more comfortably now inside the blouse. And you want your frill on the outside, your facing on the inside. Let's just check that it's all falling okay. Beautiful. Now I'm going to put some sink stitching in. This is where I'm going to stitch inside that shoulder seam right between where the seam is, right the way through to my facing. Now you can just about see my seam line there. To hold it together, so it holds the um, facing back. So you only need to do it just for a little centimetre just to hold it down. If you're not comfortable stitching accurately in that way, you can always just pop a little hand stitch, stitch it to the seam. There we go. So it just holds it back so it doesn't flap out when you're putting it on and off. So now it's time to stitch up the front seam. I've 
done my sink stitching into my shoulders and I've given my neckline a little steam and now I'm going to stitch this facing down with the overlock. I'm just going to overlock all the layers together down the front so the facing, the frill and the blouse all in one. So fold it nicely there so that the facing doesn't show on the right side and just pop a pin in to hold that facing down whilst you overlock or zigzag or whatever it is you want to do to neaten that seam at the front. There we go. And they're neatly secured so now all you need to do is pin them together, turn it through so you want the right sides together I'm going to try and trap those overlock threads in my seam so that they're a bit secure. Match those angles up really beautifully. So you want a nice even centre front. That's the bit that will show. And then pin to the hem. Okay, centimetre seam allowance all the way down the front. Nice sturdy back tack at that centre front. You don't want it coming undone. And I'm just going to make sure I trap those threads as I go. There we are, take the pins out. Give those a trim now. And then we want to press that seam open. Give it a really good press so it's nice and flat. There we are, nice flat, flat seam. And I might just give that a little hand tack just to make sure it doesn't come free. So just the hem to go. Let's lay the blouse out. As you can see, looks pretty much finished. Now I'm gonna do a turn and turn hem and I'm gonna do maybe four millimetres by four millimetres, a quarter of an inch by a quarter of an inch, something like that, just a tiny one. And just stitch on the edge. You can overlock it and turn it up. You can do whatever sort of hem you like. So just stitching all the way around. There we go. It's all stitched, give it a press and then you should have a finished blouse. Let's trim these bits away. There we go, a nice frill. You should have something that looks very much like this. Enjoy. <laughs>